So I've just hit the recording button. Did you get a notification or anything? It looks like it's recording at my end. Yeah, you know, we've done it last time. So oh, we should it perfect. Here. Awesome. Thank you so much. So that was um, a little bit of an intro into um, how we can use Power BI uh, for a little bit more of um, data storytelling in the PPPQ quiz. So I think it's a really nice kind of segue into what I'll be talking about today, which is sharing my top 10 tips and tricks for um, telling your data story in Power BI. So as Suresh mentioned, I'm co-founder of Discover AI um, with Christian Borovac. So Discover AI, um, we're a Power BI consultancy company, which specialize in Power BI for the environmental industry, but we also do graphic design as well. So we like combining Power BI with graphic design really to try and tell data stories. So I'm a Microsoft MVP for the data platform based here in Melbourne. Um, I also contribute to powerbi.tips and I'm also a member of the Australian Water Association. So today I'll be sharing lots of examples um, from across the water industry showing kind of really interesting ways that we can use Power BI to tell different types of stories. So I thought it would be really interesting for me to start um, my presentation, which is all about data storytelling, by sharing a little bit about myself and sharing a bit about my story and what brings me here today. So unlike a lot of people um, who've transitioned into the Power Platform and Power BI in particular, um, I don't have a background in kind of computer science or IT or databases. I'm actually an environmental engineer by trade and I previously worked as an engineering consultant for about eight years, where I specialized in water resource management. So what I did as an environmental engineer is I developed long-term water resource strategies uh, for towns across Australia and New Zealand to manage our future water supply and demand. But what I really spent most of my time doing was working uh, kind of knee deep in Excel models, building these crazy spreadsheets, chock-a-block full of macros and all these other things to try and um, process and bring together large amounts of data. I also did a little bit of um, spatial modeling and also hydrological and groundwater modeling as well. So a lot of time crunching the numbers. But what our clients would see and what they'd refer back to time and time again were these lengthy project reports that we pull together to try and uh, bring together all this information that we've spent six months working on. And being engineers, I'd be the first to admit that we're not known for our writing skills. We'd end up creating these monster PDF reports. So just imagine 500 to 1000 plus pages of repeating appendices where we're trying to cram in all of our modeling results. And you can just imagine how our clients would feel. They'd feel really overwhelmed with the sheer volume of data we're presenting to them. And they'd navigate through these reports and they'd end up just extracting a handful of numbers to base their decisions upon. So rewind a couple of years ago when one of my colleagues at work introduced me to Power BI. So I was literally blown away. So I remember spending that entire weekend sitting at my kitchen table, trying to learn everything I could about it from experts such as Will Thompson and Amanda when she was back at the Power BI team. So for me, really, the power was in the ability to transform my massive project report into a single page interactive report. So I thought that this was amazing. I thought that all of kind of my prayers had been answered. This is going to revolutionize the environmental industry. So, so much so that I decided um, to leave my engineering job along with Christian, who was also an environmental engineer, and start our own company, Discover AI. So where we focus on Power BI for the environmental industry. But we quickly learned it's simply not enough to present an entire project's worth of information in just a single page. So what we're doing here is we're thinking that our report users will be almost like mind readers. So that when they pick up our reports, they'll know intuitively how to navigate through the data and what key insights to extract as well. So what we forget is being analysts, we've got time on our sides. So we work on our projects for weeks, months, sometimes even years. 
so it's not just our responsibility to clean and shape and transform our data. Really, it's up to us to present the information in a way that can help facilitate decision making. So it's up to us to start with the big picture about why is our study important and then help our users kind of navigate through the different detail until finally we um, get to a point where we can start understanding and deciphering this data and start making decisions. And this is where the magic happens. This is where we can start to help enforce decision making across our organizations and really try to transform that decision into action as well. Oh, let's go next slide. So that's a little bit um, of my story about what brings me here today. So I've been working um, in earnest using Power BI every day for the last couple of years. And along the way, I've picked up a lot of different um, tips and tricks, especially focused around the data storytelling aspects. So that's what I'd love to share with you today. And um, as I mentioned, I'll share examples from across the water industry uh, to try and provide a bit of a different perspective on um, to like the sales, finance, logistics data that we often see uh, presented in Power BI reports and show a different perspective as to how we can kind of share and bring together this information. So that's it from me in terms of slides. Uh, we've got a lot of demos to get through. I wanna share uh, my top 10 tips. Uh, so I'm gonna head over into Power BI now. And um, if anyone has any questions, we'll, we've got time at the end for Q&A, but as I go through, any questions just um, write in the chat and Suresh, please feel free, just interrupt me as I go along as well. So there's lots of natural breaks. So um, you can see at the end of every tip. Sounds good. Awesome, cool. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so here I've got um, pretty much a blank report here in Power BI. And before we get started, uh, before I do anything in Power BI, I'd like to introduce my first tip. So tip number one is to structure your Power BI reports as if they are an actual kind of technical report. So we all know intuitively how to structure reports. So when you think of a technical report, we think we have an introduction, a middle and a conclusion. And a Power BI report should be no different. I think we really need that introduction to kind of set the scene, to provide the context around why are we doing this study? Um, and why should our users care about the results? Then the body of the report, this is where majority of the analysts um, spend most of their time. This is where we provide all of the different details, all the supporting information um, and all the analysis. But then the conclusion is also really important. So the conclusion is where we tie together all of the results and present it in a way that facilitates decision making. So it's really about how can we convert the data into decisions and present it in a way that's easy to uh, make decisions off. So that's my first tip. So throughout this presentation, we'll go through all those different stages of the report design. Um, but let's get started with the introduction. So here I'm just in Power BI Desktop because we're doing a demo. I've got a couple of cheats over here. I'm gonna get started um, unhiding some of my visuals here. So we're gonna get started building out our introduction. And the first thing I like to do is always to put a title of our reports. So here I've got a title, we're gonna look at water management across Victoria. Got your company logo top left, it's always very important. Um, and then the next thing I like to do is I like to always frame my reports. So we'll go over this in a little bit more detail. Um, I think it's tip number four. But at this stage, we'll just add in a background. So sorry about my very messy folder structure here. Which one are we in this one? Cool, so I've got um, an image here. I'm inserting that as my page background and I'm just gonna fit it to my page. So you can see immediately that's kind of set the scene for um, what our report should look like. So next in our introduction, it's all around setting the scene and providing that context. So I've got a couple of visuals here. 
um, which help provide that story. So our first uh, piece of the story is that we have stress on our waterways. You can see here that we've got big population growth um, in inner Melbourne. At the same time, we've got an uncertain climate, which is reducing the availability of supply. So we've got this problem where we need to work together to try and manage our water supply. Alice, so this has a question. Um, yeah? Can you elaborate on the type of map you're using here, the kind of visual? Ah, oh, yeah. So this is a map box map. So Mapbox, um, it's one of my favorite custom visuals. Uh, so we're using a Mapbox map and it is um, uh, with a chloroplan. So you can upload your custom um, shape file layers as tile sets up to the Mapbox um, studio. And you can actually interact with it. This one, I've got some drill down on it. It's a little bit slow when we're working in presenting mode, um, but you can see that you can expand to different um, uh, localities and then I've got different postcodes here. So Mapbox is extremely powerful. If anyone wants to know more about Mapbox, I'm not going to go over it in this presentation, but I've got four um, video blog posts which I've shared on Power BI tips, which go over Mapbox 101 all the way through to creating 3D maps and your own custom backgrounds and things like that. So are there any other questions, Suresh? No, that's, uh, uh, thanks for answering my question. Yeah, no worries. Um, so this is tip number one. So to structure your report as if it's a report. So we've built out our introduction here. Um, but you can see up here the title. So water management across Victoria. While that's quite informative, we know what our report's about. It's not really that interesting. It's not asking us to kind of explore the data a little bit. So what if we reframe our title to be, how can we better manage our waterways today for a more sustainable tomorrow? So suddenly that becomes a lot more interesting and we're actually invited as report users to think a bit harder about this data that we're presenting and we're invited to go explore it. So that's tip number two, is to always ask questions of your data and put those questions front and center for your report users. So being business analysts, we're always used to answering questions about our data all the time. That's what we do as our day job. So why not put them front and center to make it really clear and obvious? What questions are we trying to answer in our report? So that was tip number two. So here you can see we've got the makings of a really good introduction, but I've got a couple more pieces of the puzzle here that we want to try and communicate to our users to set the scene. So we've also got the Victorian water grid here. So the Vic water grid, it's a network of rivers, reservoirs and pipes all across Victoria, which we use to transport our water around. And then we also have a new approach, which is called integrated water management. And this is a collaborative approach where we plan and work together using all of the different components of the water cycle holistically to reach a much more kind of sustainable outcome. So you can see that we have three different pieces of information here that we want to um, walk our users through. And when we think about how we would structure a normal technical report, for your introduction, you've got a couple of pages, you can just flick through those pages. So in Power BI, we wanna make that same effect um, of our, for our users to be able to just kind of turn the page and get to the next stage of our introduction. So that brings me to tip number three, which is to use a combination of buttons and bookmarks to create that navigation effect. So here we've got, I'll open up the um, bookmark pane and bookmarks are, can be extremely powerful. You can do some really kind of cool things with them as well. Today, I'm gonna keep it really simple and I'm just gonna insert um, kind of a snapshot of the different views that we have. So you can think of bookmarks as being different snapshots of our Power BI report. So I'm simply going to add in a bookmark here and I'm gonna rename this to be my population. So I'll just call that pop. And let's do the same thing. So I've just hidden this grouping of visuals and we'll go to the Vic water grid here. So let's rename this to Vic water grid. 
And then our last bookmark here is for integrated water management. So I'm just adding this one in. So let's rename this. Perfect. So now you can see that when we click on our bookmarks, we have that ability to kind of turn the page. It's taking that snapshot of what we were looking at at that given time. Um, and while this is really good, it's not really that great for our users. Our users can't really access our bookmark pane. So that's where um, buttons come into effect, where we can assign an action to our buttons um, for each of these bookmarks. So let's go insert a button. So up here, I've just got into my top ribbon. You go insert buttons. You can see you've got lots of different options. I'll just choose a reset button. So let's bring this over here. So I'm going to keep it really simple. Again, you can do amazing things with buttons with all the on hover effects, all the dynamic text. I'm going to keep it very simple for this presentation. Um, I've just simply turned on an action for my bookmark here. So I've just gone on. And down in the actions, you can see we've got lots of different types. I'm going to select a bookmark. And for this bookmark, I want to reset our story back to the beginning. So this is back to the population, population growth. So I've assigned an action here. So let's do the same thing for our other bookmarks. I've got another bookmark here. I'll click on that one. For um, this bookmark, we want to go through to the Vic water grid. So let's go down to that one. So now when I control click on this bookmark, because I'm in the desktop, um, it takes me to that next view. So let's go and assign this one here. So now how can we better work together? This action for this bookmark will be the integrated water management. And then when we get to the end of our integrated water management, we're now ready to go exploring our data. So we can also use buttons um, to assign an action to take us to a new page navigation. So this time we don't need a bookmark. We can just go directly to a page navigation and I'm going to go through to my next page in my report. So if we just make this big screen, we can see where we've come from. So if we reset our story, you can see that we've got stress on our waterways, navigate through to the big water grid, we can see how we can better work together using integrated water management. And then when we're ready to go explore our data, then we get taken to a new page in our report. So that was tip number three, to use combination of buttons and bookmarks for kind of, to get that page navigation and um, that storytelling feel in your reports. So you can see it's a very kind of simple technique, but it's really effective, especially for presenting a lot more information. So that was the introduction. So we've gone through our first three tips. Now we're into the body of the report. Um, so here you can see we've got a, a report, almost like an environmental or waterway scorecard. So here we're having a look at how healthy are our waterways looking both now and into the future. So you can see we've got a couple of visuals here. Um, and just before I go any further, I'd like to um, just say that all of the examples I'm presenting today uh, is synthetic data. So we've, um, we've anonymized the data for some of our other projects so that we're able to share it freely with the community. So just keep that in mind. Um, so here we've got uh, lots of different kind of visuals on the page. And it kind of looks like the visuals are floating around in white space. So that brings me to tip number four which is to try to structure your report pages using layouts and backgrounds. So just like you would structure um, your chapters of your report, so you'd have headings, subheadings, and paragraphs, we should try to do the same thing in Power BI. And we can do that pretty easily by using um, things like custom backgrounds. So here I'm just over in PowerPoint. And you can see I've made a custom background for this report page. And while this looks really good, it's simply, it's just a number of shapes all layered on top of each other, you can see here. Um, so it's pretty easy and simple to create these backgrounds. If you're interested in creating backgrounds, um, Alluring Analytics, so that's Chris Hamill's blog. He's got lots of um, free example templates for especially the PowerPoint backgrounds. Um, or if you're looking for something a little bit more pre-canned, powerbi.tips 
has lots of free layouts and scrims, which you can use um, as base backgrounds. So there are a couple of cool resources which we use. So Alice, can you elaborate on what a scrim mean, means and how it's going to fit in? Yeah, so scrims, it's uh, just, I think it's a terminology that um, Mike and Seth use. I think it came from uh, the way that people refer to a theater backdrop. Mm. So it's very similar to a layout, um, but it is, um, it's just the background, but it's kind of a fancy background. So if we go into Power BI tips here, let me just quickly bring it up. You can see that um, they've got scrims and layouts. So I think the difference in their terminology is with layouts, they give you the PBIX file as well, and it has all of the buttons configured as well, as well as some sample data, so you can get started really quickly. Um, but these are the scrims here. So it's, they're a little bit more fancy. They've got some cool kind of combination of shapes. They've also got the sales report layout, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so I think it's just their newer terminology. Got it. So if we bring in our page background, all we're doing here is we're making sure um, we have no visuals selected. So just quickly before I do that, you have to remember just to export this. So you've got your PowerPoint file you can just simply change your file type to png and you can save that as an image so i've already got one so i'm not going to save it here so to bring our background in now all you do is simply add background and you browse to your file here i'm going to fit it to my page and you can see the effect almost immediately so if we have a look at um what it looked like before. You can see it's kind of floating in white space. Now what we've done is we've grouped together all the common visuals and it's much easier for us to focus our attention and um, process this information as well. So we just have to change these titles. I've just highlighted our four titles here. We have to change our label color to be white so it stands out. Um, and there you have it. So that's tip number four is to use things like layouts, backgrounds, or scrims to really frame your reports and group together key visuals to make it easier and more intuitive for people to navigate your reports. So another thing I like to do is to also add a page wallpaper, wallpaper to my report. And this just really helps to frame the report as well. So that was tip number four. Tip number five is to always um, provide additional context when your report users kind of want it. So this is a bit of a tricky one because as analysts, we've got so much information that we could present to our users. But if you're trying to present too much information at once, too many numbers, too much explanatory text, it really detracts from the message and it makes it quite noisy and hard for us to process. And so just like when you're writing a report, um, you wouldn't include all of the supporting details in the body of the report. You kind of leave those to the appendix and someone who's interested, they can go searching for it if they want. So we should do the same thing in our reports. So providing additional context, we can do that through a number of ways, such as um, drill through or using kind of hierarchies. One other option that I love using is report page tooltips. So report page tooltips allow us to provide additional snapshot of information in a small kind of report page. So it's a page within a page. So you can see when we're hovering over this, uh, this shape map here, we can see a little bit of extra information in the default tooltips about what the catchment is and what the KPI score is. But if we use report page tooltips, then we can provide so much more information, so much more rich kind of customized information. So here what I've done is I've configured um, a report page tooltip page. So tooltip pages have two key differences to standard pages. The first is if we go under page information, you can see that we've got the tooltip option toggled on. So that tells Power BI that this is a tooltip page. The second is when you notice the, the visual, um, the report page size. So you always wanna have your tooltip pages to be smaller than your big, uh, standard report pages 
because it's a page within a page, it has to fit on the screen. You don't want it to take up too much of your real estate so you can't uh, see all of the other visuals behind it as well. So that's a report page tooltip page. So if we go back to our um, master page here, let's see how we can implement them. So here I've got my visuals selected. And now if we go down into the format options under tooltip, we'll change our tooltip type from default to report page. And you can select the page that you're interested in. So here I've got um, only three different report page tooltips to choose from. I'm gonna choose the map visual. So now when we hover over this, um, this visual, instead of seeing the default tooltip, you can see that we've got our report page tooltip and it provides so much more information. And it's also dynamic. So it's taking the context of where my cursor is. So what, uh, what context we're kind of highlighting for and um, it kind of executes or filters uh, my measures and data underneath this um, for that context. So it can be really, um, it can add another layer of explanation and interpretation to your reports as well. So here in the scorecards, we can do the same thing. So I'll turn on my tooltip, we can put on our report page tooltip. This time we've got report page tooltips for our KPIs. Um, so this provides a lot more information about how can we interpret these environmental scorecards. So now when we hover over this, you can see um, we've got a description of what this key value means and how is it ranked? How have we scored this as well? So that was tip number five to provide additional context. Tip number six. Oh, sorry, Suresh, were there any questions before I go on? Uh, not from my side. Anybody has any questions? So what, one quick thing, Alice, what is this, uh, the visual you're using here? Uh, that does the matrix. Uh, that looks this like one, it. this one's just a matrix. And how did you get uh, the dots? Yeah, so the dots, so they're um, icons. So what I've done is, Actually, in my Power BI, let's see if I've got my Power BI theme file. Let's see, sorry, I'll just open it up on a different screen. One minute, I'll show you. That one. So you can see here, I've got a, Power, a custom Power BI theme file. Um, so to insert that or create a custom theme file, um, you can actually do it internally in Power BI now. And to insert it, it's just a JSON file. You can just go browse for more themes. So here um, I've got a theme file and I've actually got all these extra icons. So these icons um, are hosted as image URLs here. You can get these in a variety of different ways. And because I have access to those icons and I've just used um, conditional formatting here. So if we go have a look at our icons for the matrices. Bringing it up. You can see I've got lots of different rules to show the conditional formatting. Um, so you can do a lot with uh, icons. I've also played around with the same example, uh, doing it a lot more efficiently using um, SVG code with the, within the DAX itself. So then it makes your conditional formatting a lot easier. You don't have to host those icon files if you already have them as SVGs. And then you can dynamically, because I'm using circles, you can dynamically change the radius and the color. So there's lots of different kind of tricks you can do uh, within all the standard visuals as well. So this doesn't have to be custom visual. Awesome, great question, Bob. Um, so the next tip, if there's no more questions, uh, tip number six, this one is my favorite tip by far. Um, this is uh, something that we do a lot of at Discover AI. And tip number six is to use images, media, kind of videos, GIFs, anything to try and share your data story. And um, we all know that saying that a picture's worth a thousand words. And it's really true when it comes to trying to communicate data. So we can process images so much faster than we can with numbers and text. 
And it really helps to create that emotional connection as well between what our data is telling us and what our brain remembers and processes. So I'll show you a couple of ways of which we can do this in this report. And then I'll show a couple more examples as well. So here we've got um, our normal matrix visual. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag an image into one of the columns here. So this is an image URL. So we've hosted these images online. If anyone's um, interested in finding out how to do this, um, we've got a blog post which goes into all of the detail on how to, where to find and how to host your images for Power BI. So you can see immediately it becomes so much more clearer what these different categories are that we're assessing. So we can do the same thing for some of our other visuals. Here I've got a custom visual, it's the chiclet slicer. This is one of my favorite custom visuals because it's so simple. What it allows us to do is it allows us to, in a slicer, show our text, but also our image as well. So it really makes it clear what we're slicing our report on. And it's also much more interesting as well, I think. And lastly, in this report, we've got, um, a, we're using the card browser. This is another custom visual here um, to show a variety of different case studies across Melbourne. But when we drag in our image URL into the title image field, it just becomes so much more clear where these case studies are and what they look like. So you can see instantly it um, helps you process that information and you can understand a lot more at a glance what this report's about. So as I said, we spend a lot of time working on um, these types of examples. So I'm gonna go over a couple more. And this one here would have to be um, one of my favorite examples of how powerful data storytelling can be when you can combine Power BI with different media. So here we've got a report um, where we're visualizing lots of different storage volumes across Melbourne. And um, late last year or early last year, it was at the end of another hot, dry summer across Melbourne. And Christian and I, I remember we went out and we went visiting lots of the different reservoirs um, close to Melbourne. So lots of our different dams and storages uh, just to see what impact the drought was having on our, on our environment. And this reservoir, Melton Reservoir, it's located west of Sydney in the Werribee catchment. This one really kind of stuck in my mind. We went out there and um, it was at 3.9% capacity. So you know just by hearing that, that that sounds really empty. And trust me, it was. We got to the top of the reservoir and we looked down and Christian asked me, he's like, Alice, are you sure? Are you sure the reservoir is here? It just looked like a massive empty hole. We went to the base of it and it was literally a puddle of water. It was so empty and so dry. And coming from a modeling background, I was used to seeing these storage curves. I wouldn't think too hard about it. But when you see it in reality, when you see it in real life, it really kind of, paints a picture as to what these numbers actually mean. So we went out, we took some aerial drone footage and um, we can actually embed that in Power BI using custom visuals. So here I've got um, a custom visual. This one's the HTML um, display. So we'll just bring this one over here. And this is a custom visual um, that's actually created by Daniel Marsh Patrick. So he's an industry partner of Discovery Eye. He's an awesome guy. His passion is custom visuals. Um, we previously used the HTML viewer uh, for doing this, but that's since been deprecated. Um, so Daniel, one weekend just for fun, went out and created this amazing visual and he's working hard on it behind the scenes to get it up on the marketplace as well. So it's a very simple visual. All we have to do is drag in our um, video URL here into the HTML content. And um, then we can see our, uh, see our drone footage in action. But one thing to note is this doesn't work in the Power BI desktop. You have to publish it up online to the Power BI service. So let's see what it looks like in action. So I'm just gonna go to my report here. And we'll have a look. So we were in the storages demo page. Uh, 
and oh oh this one's still the demo so without a video cool i'll just publish it up quickly let's have a look i'll just save the changes cool while i was publishing were there any other questions suresh I'm good. Anybody has any questions uh, of the content that was covered so far? I think we're good. Awesome. Cool. So we'll just publish this one up. Cool. Oh, yeah, I think this one's the one. Awesome. So if we have a look at Melton, and if we go to full screen mode, turn off Thompson. So let's see if this works. Yeah, so there's Melton Reservoir. So you can just see, it really helps to paint a picture. It's just red dry dirt and that is the puddle of water when it should be that's at the very base of the outlet it should be a massive uh, full reservoir and you can see the contrast if we go and have a look at um, let's turn off Melton. and if we go across to Thompson Reservoir so Thompson Reservoir it's uh, Victoria's largest uh, reservoir it collects runoff from the snowy mountains and you can just see how different it is up there in the Alpine kind of region, we've got all of this water flowing in. So um, you can just see when you, when you translate your data into images and media and use it together, it can be so effective to kind of tell that data story. So that's one of my favorite kind of examples to show people really, what does this data actually mean? So that was tip number six. So where have we come from? Let me think. We've done our introduction. We did our first three tips there. Uh, we had three tips about our body. We had the layouts, the context, having images. So now we're at a stage where we can start thinking about our conclusions and how can we convert this kind of data into decisions. So let's head across to another report here. And this time we're having a look at different um, price impacts on our farmers. So we're having a look at what impact is the water price having on our farmers and how can we make it more affordable? So here we can see that we've got a lot of different scenarios that we're analyzing and we're computing different prices over time and it's, it's a bit overwhelming. How can we interpret all of these different combinations? I think we have 42 combinations of scenarios here and try to decipher that information to make a decision off. So that's where selecting the right visual really comes into play. And we've got a couple of key visuals which can really help us with decision making. One of my favorite is the decomposition tree. So this is a fairly new visual. It's one of the, um, one of the AI visuals that Power BI teams released. I love it. I use it all the time wherever possible. It's a really simple visual, but it's so effective, especially at um, providing that decision support. So it only requires two different fields. So first we have to select what do we want to analyze. So we want to analyze the average water price here. So you can see holistically our average water price is $1,237. But what do we want to explain this by? So in our case we want to explain it by all of these different scenario options that we have listed here. So these are our annual fees, our catchments, land elevation, registration, river basin, and the water tax. So we've got, these are all of the different levers that the government has available to them to vary the price of water for our farmers. And what we're looking for is we really want the lowest, what scenario has results in the lowest price for our farmers. So you can see immediately that the catchment area, that's our key lever that we can draw on to try and reduce the price on our farmers. We can then look to vary the annual fee. We can then look to vary the land elevation. 
and so on and so forth and go down and it, it really paints a picture of what options are most influential to our outcome. And this can be really powerful when we start to limit and restrict different scenarios. So let's say that, no, we have no option, we have to apply this price just to the sub-district. How will that change our result and what is the next kind of path which, is, um, which we should go down? So if we do that, you can see the visual, it automatically responds. Now it says the annual fee and the land elevation, the river basin, um, and so on. So you can see how this could be used as a really effective uh, decision-making tool for, um, for different regulators. And it's something that the end users really like because it gives them the ability to play around with this data on the fly. Because you don't have to use the AI here. You can actually go and um, assign the hierarchy kind of on the fly in the visual. So you could say, what if land elevation is the first thing which we're fixing, then what happens? So that was tip number seven. It's all about choosing the correct visuals to try and help promote decision-making. So here we have another example from across the water industry. This time we're having a look at our customer sentiment. And what do our customers value most when it comes to waterway management? So in this, um, in this talk today, I've already presented quite a few different examples from across the water industry. And this is where it brings me to tip number eight, which is all about thinking about how can we create linkages between our reports. So you can think of all our individual reports as mini chapters in our really big data story that we're trying to tell. Now we don't wanna make one report which has all of these chapters in it because then it becomes almost unmanageable. Uh, it becomes almost like a monster report and anytime anyone wants to update it or access it, it becomes really tricky. And other people in the department might wanna use these reports for uh, different purposes as well. So that's where um, this tip of creating linkages between your reports can be really valuable. And we can do that in Power BI using cross-report drill through. So what do I mean by that? Let's go back to our environmental scorecard here. And let's just imagine that I'm managing the Yarra or the Werribee catchment over here. And I really want to understand uh, what are our customers saying in this region? I know what our environmental scorecard looks like, but what do our customers value? So I really wanna be able to filter the other report based on my selection here. And I wanna navigate through those two, almost like they're the same report. So if we go back to our, um, so that's our source report. That's where we wanna come through. This is our target report. This is where we wanna to go to. So to set up cross report drill through, we just have to have a few little things uh, set up. The first thing is in our target report, we have to make sure we have this cross report drill through toggled on. And then we have to drag in the field that we wanna link these two reports by. So in our case, it's the catchments. So you can see that whenever we use cross report drill through, Power BI automatically creates a back button. That doesn't work for the cross report drill through, so I always delete it. So just something to note. Um, so here we just bring in the, um, the catchments here. Um, so you can see we've got a table called river basin and catchment. So what's important here is that we have that same table and same column in both reports. So that tells Power BI that we can link these two together. So you can see that if we go back to our, our source report, we have that exact same table there. And the last thing we need to do to get this working is we have to make sure that we have the cross report drill through enabled in both reports. So we get there by options and settings, options, and then I think it's thinking. <laughs> and then it's all the way down at the bottom under the current file report setting. And you just have to make sure you have this option here ticked on. So cross report drill through. 
So you have to have this option ticked on in both your target and source reports. And then the last thing is this cross report drill through, it only works in the Power BI service. So you have to publish both reports up to the service to see it in action. So if we go and have a look here, we'll go back to, this is our workspace here, which has all of the report examples that we've been looking at. So I've published this up previously. And that is one quick question uh, you mentioned about the, uh, the consumer sentiment, right? That you're representing. Yeah. The, are you doing that within Power BI or are you just grabbing the data from somewhere else? Uh, oh, the sent, yeah, no, so that is, um, yeah, terminology. Yeah, so it's just mm -hmm. how happy or, yeah, we're not doing any sentiment analysis. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. So we're not using any of the AI um, options. It's just, uh, it was just the name of the survey. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but that would be cool. That would be taking it to the next step, I reckon. Yep. Um, yeah. So here we are, we're in Power BI. So I'm just in the service in the workspace. I'll just go full screen mode. So we can see it in action. And if we go back to the Werribee catchment here, now if we right click, you can see that we've got an option for drill through. So this time you can see that we're drilling through to an external report. So we're drilling through to our customer sentiment report. And it opens it up. And what actually happens here is, one is that it uh, already filters the data in this report based on uh, my common table. So I had it connected up to, um, yeah, it's a little bit slow with screen sharing, I think, unfortunately. Um, so I had it connected up to the Werribee catchment. So it's filtering this report based on that data. So you could imagine just how powerful this can be. It means that you could create this kind of linkage between lots of different reports um, and have them all as standalone reports, but still have that kind of navigation feel as well. So it can be very powerful. So that's tip number eight. Um, so we've gone through our introduction, done our middle, kind of done our conclusion now, but we still have two more tips left. So tip number nine is all about sharing our data story. And tip number 10 is about listening and collecting feedback. Uh, from your users and continually updating and refining your story. Were there any questions before we jump into the last two? Any questions, anybody? Um, you can just type it in the chat window if you do have. I am monitoring the chat window right now. Awesome, cool. So we'll keep going. Um, so tip number nine is all about sharing your story. So you can see here we're in the Power BI service. I'm in a workspace here and it's got lots of different reports. It's not really an experience which is really nice for people to consume reports, um, especially if you're not used to Power BI. So I always recommend sharing your Power BI reports as an app. So apps are really easy to create. Um, I've already created one here. All it is is you need a title. Um, I've got a logo here. You can have a theme color. And you can include things like support site, where to get more info. But what's great about apps is it allows you to organize your content and your Power BI reports, but also to present information outside of Power BI. So here I've got a link to a feedback form. Um, so you can embed things like Microsoft Forms directly into your app, also embed videos directly into your app as well. So it creates that experience, which makes it really nice to consume your data stories. So let's go check out the app. So we were also with the PPPQ, we were running that all through a Power BI app as well. So you can see that we've got our reports here, but what we've also got is we've got our um, embedded feedback form, so you can embed that directly inside your app and get feedback from your users. And you can also embed different videos to provide additional kind of context around what we're presenting. And also, um, so it's not just an app 
that um, you could use to share your story. You could also these days share it in Microsoft Teams. So this has been really effective when you're collaborating with project teams. You could also uh, create an embed link and embed it in SharePoint or a web portal. Anywhere where your users um, can have that kind of additional uh, structure around them to help them interpret and understand your findings. So it's always really useful and important. So that's tip number nine. So lucky last tip now, tip number 10. It's all about um, listening and uh, kind of continually evolving your data story. So as analysts, we all know that our data doesn't really stop coming. And that's one of the biggest benefits of Power BI. It's a tool that allows us to automatically refresh our reports when new data comes in. So then our data story, it shouldn't really stop. Just because we stop working on a report, it doesn't mean that we should stop refining our data story. It should continually evolve over time. And this is where um, things like placeholders can become really valuable. So in our reports, we always like to include small placeholders scattered throughout the reports, just as a visual kind of cue and a visual jogger to tell our report users that this report isn't finished and we really value their input. So what other key information would you like to see here? Um, and that helps people uh, to know that your report isn't finished, it's continually evolving, and it allows you to easily get buy-in and get feedback from your report users. Also another, um, another key way of collecting feedback from your users and kind of refining your visuals is to use the Power BI app to, um, to collect kind of feedback via comments. So you can right click on different visuals and if I wanted to ask um, Christian a question about what does this visual actually mean, um, then what we can do is when we close these comments, if uh, Christian gets alerted, he's been um, involved in some conversation here and if we clear this uh, clear this selection there we are now we can see everything let's expand that when we go back and um, and select the bookmark so this comment creates a bookmark we can actually see exactly what our end user was looking at at that same time and it provides a really nice mechanism, almost like track changes in Word, to try and um, get that feedback and have that conversation, like when and where people kind of want to provide that feedback. So that was tip number 10, is to um, always try to provide an avenue to continually evolve your data story over time and listen to your users. So I think that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, a quick recap of the top 10 tips. The first is to frame your story. So that's to have your introduction, middle, conclusion. Second is to ask questions of your data and try to put those front and center. Third tip is all about navigation. So using buttons and bookmarks to create that kind of story-like feel. The fourth is to add structure. So that's using backgrounds, layouts, scrims, anything to provide structure to your report pages. The fifth is to create context. So we did that through report page tooltips. Number six was to use images, videos, GIFs, anything to create that emotional connection between your users and the data. Number seven is to make decisions. So to present your information in a way that facilitates decision making. So we did that using decomp tree. Number eight is to create linkages between all the different chapters. So we did that using the cross report drill through. Number nine is to share, share your story with your users. So we did that through the app. Um, and number 10 is listen. So continually evolve and get feedback and listen to your report users to get their input to kind of continually improve your data story. Um, so for anyone listening today, we always love to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy days to kind of listen to us and um, hear what we have to say. So we've got a special 25% off discount code for our four 
Power BI training courses, which we're running at the moment. We're running them um, virtually. We've got our next Designers Masterclass is actually on the 20th of July. So that's pretty soon. Um, but we, we have quite a few people. I think we've got two or three people dialing in from America for that one. So that will be cool. Uh, we also do the water, environmental and groundwater training as well. And if anyone's keen to connect um, or if you have any other questions from this session or if you're keen to kind of be involved in the quiz as well, then just um, please connect, reach out. Um, I love hearing people's questions. And also if anyone has kind of a different way of doing things or a better way of doing things, then um, always love chatting about Power BI. Cool. So thank you very much. I think um, that was all um, that I had today. Suresh, were there any other any other questions or? I'm good. This is a really great session, Alice. Uh, I haven't seen quite a lot of uh, videos embedded within Power BI, so that is something new to me. And it was also, you know, I saw how you pulled everything together, right? Different content, uh, different visuals together to make it. Uh, uh, you know, it looked like a, a story that you want to go through, uh, which makes much more sense because, you know, people um, uh, remember more if you, uh, if they see it as a story, which flows, right? So, yeah, this is a really fantastic session. Thank you. Thank you, Alison, Christian. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's one of my favorite um, presentations to give because it's just, it's so important to share stories as, as people, we love kind of telling stories and hearing other people's stories. And I think as soon as you share anything as a story, people are so much more receptive to kind of listening and they're actually much more interested. So if you can share data as a story, then it um, can be really powerful. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm going to post the recording on this, uh, of this session on our, our YouTube channel and um, Alice, are you going to share any slides? Uh, are there any slides? I, you know, this is mostly a demo that you've done, but if you do. Yeah, I'm happy to share these slides if you want. Um, Absolutely. I'll put that in the box uh, location that, that I have. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, I'll send those um, straight after. Please. Yeah, sounds good. Um, anybody else, any last questions before we conclude the session? Going through. Session. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Oh, thank you so much for everyone's um, feedback and thanks in the chat. That's really nice. Yeah, I'm looking Feels at the chat. Feels like I'm there in, the, in California. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, everyone for attending this uh, and look uh, forward to doing the next one. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was really great. We had a Thank good you, time. Alice and Christian. Thank you. Have a good uh, rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Have a good night. Bye. See you later. Bye. Yeah.